morning to everyone. Uh, before we begin, I will take this opportunity to welcome and felicitate our chief guest today, Sri Sapnodil Bhagwa sir. I as retired from my commissioner, Government of Assam. I will request our honor of sir kindly to felicitate Sapnodil Bhagwa sir. Welcome and felicitate our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir for kindly agreeing to grace this brief but solemn program. I would like to request our registrar Sir kindly to do the honor.
this display actually shows the great efforts that was required to make this India one. Starting from Kashmir to Devanagar and also from the eastern part to the western part. The lot of, I think, uh, 547 princely states were actually marched to make this India one India and this was the, the deep for the development actually uh, accomplished. I would like to request uh, Sopranen Guru Sahib kindly to say a few words on this occasion. Respected uh, Vice Chancellor Dr. Das, Registrar Chaudhary, and friends here in Sydney, <coughs> and all distinguished people present here. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to this occasion of launching of the biography of Patel just prior to the National Unity Day, which coincides with the birthday of Sadat Bhattabhai Patel. Well, I was going through the picture, small little documentary that was exhibited before us. It was very nice to see that all areas have been covered except possibly in the Northeast, as it usually happens in National History, to have got get there. I have a small little photograph here, if I can show it to you. Is the Khorai which is given by Gopinath Bordeloi, given to Sadar Patel when he visited us. Now, if you all know that a separate kind of independent struggle was happening in the Northeast, on 16th of, Jan of August 1947, two kings had declared, one was Fizo, who declared the independence of Nagaland because the contract was that British had left, we had no agreement to the government of India and therefore Nagaland is not a part of the Indian. That was one major cause of concern which had erupted but somehow gets neglected in the national historical context and especially in the context of development of India post-independence, that is post-15 uh, August 1947. This was a very important aspect which had to be dealt by the then Premier Gopinath Borodoy with the able support of Sardar Vallabhai because Nehruji wasn't interested as much as he was not interested in the delay of Gupinath Bordeloi exceeding to keep Assam within the Group C states which would have made Assam a part of East Pakistan had we got the independence. That there is a long list of correspondence in between Gupinath Bordeloi uh, and uh, Johanna Nehruji as to what had happened just prior to the grouping as it was declared and the resistance of the Assam leadership to agree to the merger of Assam with East Pakistan, that is the group C uh, number of states. So this was another issue and the second king who was not very agreeable to be a part of the Indian Union was the king of Manipur. If you google the accession of Manipur, it happened in 1949. And it didn't happen in Manipur. It happened in Shillong. The king of Manipur was hijacked or kidnapped from Manipur. He had been eluding the government of India forces and was staying in the hills of uh, Manipur. The Tankul and the Ukuru areas because he had found support of the then pioneer of the Naga nationalist organization as founded by Fizo. So this also was another great development which happened in the Northeast, which had Sardar Balam had been taking a very active part in getting the two recalcitrant uh, leaders of the people, one is Fizo of Nagaland, and secondly, I think his name was King uh, Rajendra Singh, if I am not mistaken. If you still go to the Manipur house, which is there next to St. Mary's College in Shillong, in the Tomasco Square, 
the house is still there, one evening where V.P. Menon was there, a young ESP called Bhavani Borua was there who went with his crystal and left it on the table so that if the king of Haripur did not sign, that was a gentle threat to him that he would go from here to straight to Jain Road in his Baya Phillies Bazaar. So the king was virtually at 11 o'clock at night, he was forced to sign the accession of Manipur to India. The third great road, as you can see, that is the Parai, which was given by Gupinath Bordeloy, and it is still now stored in the Sardar Dalam Bhagavad Museum at Ahmedabad. Again, this house is very important in the sense that uh, Subhas Kosu's brother, who was the, it was the DC's residence which has now been converted into the Sardar Dalam Bhagavad Museum. I think our Chief Minister must have got his idea from there to be to convert the DC's house. And Subhas Bose's elder brother, as you know, was from the ICS and he was there. Subhas Bose started his initial uh, independence thinking from that part of the, that house itself. And now that it has been converted into a museum, that Farai which was given to him in 1948 when he came to settle this crisis of Nagaland and Manipur. Now the third issue in the Assam context is that all of you must be aware of the serious level of conflict in between Gupinath Bordwa and Jawaharlal Nehru regarding keeping the refugees in Assam. Now Bordwa was very worried about the context as to what would happen if there is so much of a people coming in which might disturb the balance as such the race relations was not very good because of the partition issue and there you have such a lot of people I think nearly 30 lakhs of people refugees are coming and you know this resettlement issue was a big issue government of Assam did not have the money these people were virtually driven out of their homes Pakdar, Madhi, Dhuvahat, Puri, Fakha, Fakha, Zona, Hile as Bukhan Azarika recorded so that problem was a big crisis for the government of Assam. Now Nehru had outright rejected and said that if Assam, Bordeloi said that we do not have enough areas in Assam to accommodate these people, so let us think of a statewide dispersal of the refugees which will be accommodated throughout India. Why should West Bengal and Assam bear the brunt of this refugee problem? <coughs> which That is the East Pakistan part of it or the East Bengal part of it. Now this problem, the only person who found audience, who did not found audience, was in Sardar Dhaka. And thereby they agreed that there are certain areas, a special grant was made available to the government of Assam. And that is why you have these colonies, refugee colonies. Where is the one nearest to Guwahati? Where is Guwahati colony in Guwahati? Where you have King Kukri Bazaar now, in 19, till 1967 was Noankali The next was Bonda. The next was Hojai. The next was Boko, Soiga. So this dispersal that happened of the refugees had a great contribution of Sardar Ballab Bhai Patel in settling the refugees in Assam and at the same time taking care of what is a human problem vis-a-vis -vis the problem that was administrative and also a bit of social in Assam. But I think it was because of the sagacity and the political foresight and the acceptability of the leadership. Now that has been a great transition in Indian political leadership is that no person, no political figure can now shape the minds of the people. It is rather the electorate which decides who is going to be their voters. You know, our politicians today are not so influential enough that they can change the minds of the people as, was, as it happened during the time of the independence struggle or what maybe Mahatma Gandhi did or what Sada did. Now, why I am telling you is that we seem to undermine the role of uh, Sardar Patel. Now, which are the starting points? Which is the starting point? Two starting points of the Indian independence struggle 
happened under the leadership or rather assistant leadership of Sadar Balakar, which subsequently shaped the course of Indian history and especially in freedom side. Where did Gandhi Jatra happen? Who was the deputy leader? Who did the organization of the ground level organization? Was it Mahatma Gandhi, the director from, uh, from, from South Africa who had come and set up a camp uh, and Ashram in Sabarmati? Could he have mobilized that much of people? Who was the man who mobilized the people? If you look at it, you will find that it was Sardar Dallad Bhai Badeh who mobilized the people which made Gandhi Jatra happen. It was the first song of the British Empire, if you say, and the second was the Bordoli peasant song. Had it not been the Chorachori or Champaran had happened, but Champaran could not have a volunteer effect as much as the Bordoli peasant revolution had had, or the Gandhi Jatra had. So without these two events, we subsequently see the independent struggle would have not got the freedom, the booster dose that was required or the general acceptance. It was only after that in 1921 that Assam also decided we must have the a branch of the Indian National Congress. And imagine the impact that 1921 Assam Congress was formed and in 1926, four years later, you had the part session of the Congress. Now imagine Assam in those days. Now the fourth thing which I just forgot to mention about the context of contribution of Sardar Dallad Bhai Patel towards the North East. What happened in 1947? 15th August? Rail link got snapped. The river route got snapped. There was no communication to reach people or food stuff or food drinks to Assam. Then this North Eastern corridor length of the railways. It was decided immediately because that was the biggest security concern of India that a whole northeast which already had two people and <coughs> even locally there was resistance to the uh, to the freedom movement or rather you know the situation political law and order situation was not all that good in those days in 1947 that unless there was a link established with the mainland there was a chance that the chicken neck uh, would have virtually swing up the northeast from there without any line of communication. Because the steamer route through uh, East Pakistan or, or Bangladesh or today would have not have been possible. So it was Sadar Dallad Bhai Patel who really pressurized the railway industry that look, we have to establish this northeastern corridor link immediately within the shortest possible time. And here we had 300 kilometers of railway line built from Siliguri, or rather from Barawani, I think they took the junction and came here all the way. So this very important part, I think, in the northeastern context, which is not reflected in the in the documentary, is something of a subject of research of the DKH. I think with all you people who are so socially committed and also have great access to academy. Uh, inputs. I think this is something which could be added in the national context from uh, as a celebration of the National Unity Day, which would be this is okay, this is fine, but these are the additional inputs so far as Sadar Dalla Bhattacharya is concerned with the northeastern part of India and especially in the Assam context. So I think uh, you will definitely take up this bit of study. Once the celebrations are over, I think uh, this again could open up a new chapter of study of Northeastern history and also Assam history. Because not many people are aware, and I think except Hirut Purva, who has done some research on the Bordodoy Nehru conflict, there has not been much of study historically about this part of Assam. And we are normally very reluctant to treat uh, contemporary history, we still prefer to be in uh, 1671, the date is yet to be done. Great So, uh, so I think my request to you all uh, that please try to utilize and add another chapter of Sadar Balabai's contribution towards building up this 
great nation, otherwise the whole concept of North East would not have been there. The whole treating of concern for the national unity would not have been there. And he was as a practical man rather than being rhetoric, more on rhetoric, that he had laid this foundation of Assam, which we, or the North East, which we did. So with these three words, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be present here. Uh, had I got some time, maybe I could have taken more time out to uh, bring out the role of Sadar Badabha today in the Assam context or the Northeastern context. But all said and done, I think uh, I've just flagged the issue which is for you all to carry on. So thank you, BC sir, for giving me the opportunity and I hope that uh, this opportunity, at least for my part, would continue that you continue to share your love and affection with us and give me an opportunity to react with the right students as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for this uh, very precise and insightful comments on Sardar Pate's contribution towards building North East and making it a part of India. And I, I look forward to you, sir, uh, in appropriate time, we will hold a full lecture maybe, uh, on Sardar Pate's contribution uh, in making North East as a part of India. That will be uh, somehow we will slide out. So, thank you again. And uh, I would now like to request our Vice Chancellor, sir, to, to, to share his thoughts on the day. Respected chief guest, Sri Sophie Gauravaji, our registrar, Dr. Chaudhary, all the director of the school, uh, and all others who are present here. I am happy that uh, in a very short notice, with the requirement of UGC to organize this program, and it has been very well organized uh, by our university. We we'll keep the record to be presented to the University Grand Commissioner in a very good way. Uh, what uh, Baruaji said, in fact, I have also heard a little about it because uh, I had an opportunity to interact with Dr. S.C. Jami, who was Governor of Odisha. For some time, he, was, he played a very key role in the accession of uh, Netherlands and uh, some other states in Assam. Uh, and there are many other issues. In fact, uh, uh, at the outset, I must uh, wish you all a happy National Integration Day, uh, National Unity Day, which uh, will remind us the role and responsibility which uh, uh, Sardar Patelji played in uniting this country. Uh, if we look at Ramayana or Mahabharata, that gives us an idea about that how great was our country. You know, in Mahabharata, uh, it says that whenever Duryodhan was uh, defeated, he wanted to hide somewhere that is in China today. And it is Gandhar, whenever we talk about uh, Gandhari was from Gandhar, that is now in Afghanistan. These were all parts of the country. Bangladesh was uh, part of our country, Pakistan was part of our country. Just uh, to remember and uh, remind us that uh, you look at part of part of the Kashmir. We have been struggling for the last 75 years, but unable to uh, acquire it, unable to make it an integral part of the country. We say only that it is an integral part of India, but we are unable to make it. So, Vartaman Ka Sarkar, Vartaman Ka Pradhan Mantri, Jho Akhand Bharat Ka Baare Me Baat Kar Rahe Hai, Jho Akhand Bharat Ka Sopna Pura Hooga, If people like Sardar Vallabh Patel will born in this country, There are people who are there, They are trying their best to make it Akhand Bharat, And if you look at Akhand Bharat, Imagination of the present government, You will fulfill perhaps you will be that is very difficult because when the, so many states were acquired by Sardar Patel for integration of this country, there were many difficulties. The stories are very painful to know. But it was he only who could make it. Perhaps, uh, so 
this is this will be a very political statement. I should not make it, but uh, given him an opportunity to lead the country, perhaps the things would have been different. India would have been a different country altogether. Because uh, the then Prime Minister was uh, apathetic, casual on many issues, which should not have been there. Perhaps we would not have a Pakistan, and perhaps the. Uh, country could have been a different country with a better, perhaps it would have been a better country. What I, it is my personal opinion, maybe I may be wrong, many of you are might have different opinion. It could have been a different country. But uh, at the right time, uh, at the right moment, uh, wrong decisions were perhaps taken by the people. And uh, Patel G was ignored, uh, sidelined, decisions were taken. Otherwise, uh, it would have been a great country, great country in terms of uh, geographical uh, geographical areas, uh, the, uh, land areas. It would have been one of the one of the largest countries of the world. But it could not happen. Now the present government is trying hard to follow the path of uh, uh, Patel Ji uh, in making it a Akhand Bharat. Some thoughts are going up in this regard. Uh, if it happens, perhaps uh, people like me of my generation may not be able to see that Afghan Bharat. Afghan Bharat, Bharat, Bharat should be made possible by people, younger people like you. You should think about it. So that you know, it will have many advantages. Because whenever we talk about a divisional structure, it has its own cost. Because we are paying heavily for administration of these territories and these different countries, separating the boundaries, boundaries of the country. So if we can remove those boundaries, if at all there is a consensus develop among the, the small states, like for example, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, uh, it's a very open to all of you, you know, I know, everybody knows uh, what problem we are facing because of Bangladesh. Particularly since it is a very large portion of Bangladesh is uh, covered by Assam, Meghala. If we look at it, what is the what we are in for safety, security and all the problems. Had it not been there, had it been part of our part of our country, that things could have been different. They could have been happy, we could have been happy and we could have been more richer, bigger, better in all respect. So similar could have been with Pakistan, similar could have been with Bhutan, similar could have been with some part of China, Tibet. So uh, he, he lived a long life, but uh, uh, but there was very less time at his disposal to uh, fulfill his dream, which the present government is able to dream. And I wish that the dream of the present government should be fulfilled. And all of us should keep in that direction. So once again, I wish you all a national thing today. And let us all take a place that we should also keep in that direction. We should also contribute in that direction. So that we, could have, we can have a larger country with better facilities, with better uh, image which we have today uh, uh, with, with unity and unity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Before I call our sister, sir, to offer this moment to talk to I have one announcement. The government of Assam Director of Higher Education has requested that all institutions, educational institutions, should take part in the unity run that is being organized by the government of Assam on 31st of October, Monday, at 6 a.m. from the state. So uh, we have already given the notice from the community side that anyone who is willing to take part uh, should give the name to uh, the Vino data, our system analysis, so that we can coordinate with them. Uh, we have contacted the district sports officer. They have said that they will be giving the T-shirts, the, the gaps, and then also the refreshments. But you have to reach the stadium half at 6 CM will inaugurate uh, the program at, uh, at before by 7 and from 7 the run will start. It will move from the stadium to the Devil and then round about the Devil come back to the stadium. 
So please uh, give your names uh, to Vinod Deka uh, so that we can coordinate the program and then ensure our participation in the program. So now I request our address to offer the program to the hand. Oh, my God. 